I'm back here with my good friend Frank Cohen, and good this is again. we have in the past showed his. We called it what geriatric. Our geriatric garden. Yes, yeah. <laughs> geriatric gardening. And today he's going to tell us about his grid tied solar system that also has a battery backup. Battery backup to it. Yep. And so we're going to tell you how how he chose it and how how it's working for him. How the system works, just real quick, is that um, a lot of people think that when you get solar. You're set. The grid goes down, what do you do? You live off your solar. That's not the case. When you have a grid-tied system. That's right, a grid-tied system. When the, the solar is fed, not to your house, but it feeds the grid. And then what'll happen is, um, if the grid goes down, the solar, you'll, you'll stop getting electricity. The solar stops feeding the grid, and the reason is because you got workmen out there, and they're on the lines, and you, what you don't want to do is have all these people feeding electricity back to those lines because they those lines are, are dead so they can get work done on them. So I, I didn't know this when I first got this, but in grid-tied systems, that's the case. So if you want to have some degree of independence, you have to get batteries. Now the battery works is the grid or the solar panels, the inverters then feed power to the battery, the battery feeds the power to the house. If the grid goes down now, um, because it's not feeding the grid to begin with, it just feeds to the batteries and then the batteries to the house. So right now we're on the grid. So what this app does is it shows me how much um, is actually being consumed. You can see here, uh, this is showing you how much power actually is being generated by the panels and it'll even display the entire array. So I can look at this and I can tell if any of the panels are out. Now see right now, those two panels in the center, how they're producing less power? And that's because the chimney is casting a shadow on those two panels right now. And the reason I went independent inverters was because otherwise this would have shut down eight panels and, and I would have had significantly less electricity. Then the other app, let's see if I can find it. What this one does is this actually shows the power flow. So what you can see here is right now in the house, probably because um, I have, I don't know, maybe the oven is on. Um, I'm running about 2,800 watts. The, the panels are producing 4,000 or four kilowatts and the house is only using 2,000. So what it's doing is it's feeding power through this solar back to the batteries, back to the house, and it's also sending power back off to the grid because I, I don't need all the power that it's producing right now. So I'm not a prepper. I want to start with, uh, with uh, saying that, but I also um, have worked hard to have, be a little bit more self-sufficient, particularly because in Florida with hurricanes and a bit of a degradation of the grid system itself, there's concerns that, you know, you could be down and out of power for quite a long time. Yeah. So how do you decide how big of an, a solar array to get? So you want to analyze your electrical usage. And you know me, I'm a bit obsessive, compulsive about research. He's, so, a, ma he's a mathematician. Right. So I have 10 years worth of um, my power data. And I put all that into the statistical software program that I have. And it said, here's what your average usage is per day. And then it builds what are called confidence intervals. And it just says that basically, um, here's the upper limit of what you use. And only two and a half percent of the time will you ever go over this amount. And I said, okay, so I built a system to that top range. If I go over that two and a half percent, that's the way it is sometimes. So, yeah. so I ran it through, I calculated, I talked to a company, I shopped the panels when I determined which panels I wanted Qu to get. Quick question on that. Yeah. So can you, you can just look on your bill. Uh, basically, that's what you're doing. You're going through old bills, uh, old like uh, electrical yes, bills, and, electrical and it will bills. show you how many. The kilowatt hour use. Okay. So that'll give you, someone could go on there yep. and obviously probably not everybody's going to go back 10 years right. like you, but someone could go back, what, just, I mean, a year or whatever, you know, or, or you're just looking it back. It depends where you live. So we're yeah. in Florida, right? Yeah. So in the summertime, the usage is significantly higher because of the heat and humidity. Yeah. In the wintertime for those two weeks of the year that the weather's nice, <laughs> you know, you use a lot less. Uh, power during those times also so it, it would be difficult if you did it like in and you took June July and August let's say you would not get a fair representation of what you you would over purchase basically gotcha. on the panels yeah. but if you and if you went back and looked at just say January February March or December January February you'd under purchase so when you are in places in my opinion as a statistician, if you're looking at analyzing this in places where there's significant seasonal differences in the weather, maybe take one month from each of those quarters. Okay. 
and so you have four months worth of data and you take the average of that and, and decide, you know. And the other part of it is how much power do you want to produce? So some people are like, well, I only want 50%. Yeah. Because I'm not looking for a downgrade situation. I'm just looking to reduce my electric bill. But, but I ran this at 100% so that in the case that the grid goes down, that I could power the entire house okay. um, with just the solar. Gotcha, gotcha. And you have to decide over what period of time is that a payoff. So I calculated on the house here. I looked at what our electric bill was. If I went to 100% based on what my basic payments were going to be, this system will pay itself off in about eight and a half years. That's okay. really good. Yeah, that is good. You know, that's really good. How long do you expect the panels, with, unless, you know, terrible storm comes, but what do they suggest they last? So they say they last 30 years. Every year you have some degradation of the panels. It's something like 0.6%. So let's say over 20 years, the panels have degraded by 12 or 13 percent or even by 15 percent. It's to me, it's really not that big a deal because since we got the system two and a half years ago, I haven't had an electric bill and the cost of electricity has gone up significantly, something like 18 percent wow. since we did this. So so this gives you sort of the flat um, rate, if you will. It guarantees that your power is going to be consumed at a certain rate. Gotcha. So that, that was a big deal for me also because I knew, you know, we were looking at big increases in electricity over time. Well, why don't we go take a look at your batteries? Let's do that. So what you're looking at here, I just put this little structure up in order to protect, try to keep the equipment a little bit cooler and keep it safer. So okay. I'll show you what we got in here. Uh, Chad, we were looking at this. It was at 1855, yeah. all right? Now it's at 1852. So just in the time that we've been here, it's gone ahead and it's running backwards, which means that those panels right now are feeding more power into the grid than we're using. So we're at a negative power consumption right now. Now, obviously at night, that's not the case. So this, um, this is a control box for the generator. These contain the batteries. There are um, 16 batteries in each one of these boxes. Those batteries are 750 watts each. So the, that 16 gives me a 12,000 or 12 kilowatt um, of power for this box and 12 kilowatt uh, hours of power for that box as well. And what I do is I keep a remote thermometer in here. So I like to, to be able to observe temperatures. If it gets too hot, I can vent these uh, boxes out. Here's the sequence. The grid powers my house right now. The grid goes down, a hurricane or something else like that. The solar panels will power the house. But if there's no sun, then the batteries will power the house. And if the batteries run dry and there's no sun and the grid's still down, then I have a generator with 500 gallons of propane. That will run for anywhere from 10 to 11 days, depending on how well I conserve um, electricity. And obviously during that time, the sun will come back out. And if it doesn't, then it's all over anyway. <laughs> and it doesn't really matter at that point. You know, we just wait to be taken up in the clouds. So that would be that would be the end of that. So so that's how the generator reads into the system. Everything is powered through this box called a Solark. This thing is actually quite incredible and and this um, controls everything. So the way I have my system set up, a lot of times people will put up a solar system and they'll have maybe six panels or eight panels that are on a single inverter. And then they have separate inverters for those sets of panels. The problem with that is if, um, like in this case, my chimney will, will draft a shadow at certain times of the day over a couple of the panels. If one panel goes, you lose the whole bank. So the way this is set up is each panel has its own inverter. So if you lose one panel, you lose one panel and that's it. So it, it significantly mitigates uh, the loss there. These produce together 24 kilowatts of power. If I'm careful, um, I can run my house at under a thousand watts or under a kilowatt per hour. If that's the case, then I get at least 24 hours out of these batteries. Thank you very much, Frank. In the future, we're going to have more videos coming out on solar and always appreciate it. And if you get a chance, go buy your health and homestead um, t-shirt. That's what I did. I bought mine. Even doing these interviews, I still don't get freebies. So I had to pay for my own t-shirt. So you have to pay for yours too. So go online and buy a t-shirt because they're great and they're comfortable. And by the way, it was a surprise when I came over and you had a shirt on. So. Yeah, I just changed it.
So. All right, well, thank you. Thanks, man. Right, Appreciate it. You. And by the way, if you like this video, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell notification. God bless and have a fantastic day.